uh, organized religion is um, it's too structured. I think that structure is not a human condition, but we have put it onto ourselves and attempted to make it a human condition, and so it is becoming a human condition. And you can't live within a set of rules. You have to live in a place where there are rules that you've created that are going to change around you consistently, always changing, always changing, that nothing is static. You can't write in a book how to do something and then just do that. You can write in a book how to do something and do it for then, and then that's the thing is, is you can't every day get up and read from this book and base your life on that. That's organized religion is when you put it in writing and you study it. That is a problem because it's just destructive towards evolution. It's not a problem. I, don't know, I guess you'd call it a problem. I think that organized religion... is a fear-based thing. I think people want to feel... people want to feel... connected. And so when they're told that they will feel connected if they study this religion, if they give over to it... Like, I think that... I think it's ridiculous that Christianity... that what Christianity is about is worshipping some guy. Not about living like the guy I I just I don't I feel like it's such a simple concept that people overlook like yeah you say thank you Jesus and things like that and it it doesn't do anything no Jesus isn't giving you anything it's he's dead he was a guy that died that lived a certain way and helped people around him and and because he isolated himself he got afraid and killed, had himself killed. He manifested his own death, I think. He was a fireball. It was too extreme. We have to learn from what he did and live like him, but balance it out. Because it, you can't be I, tripping all the time. I think he was drugged out pretty frequently. He just lost touch with balance, man. But don't worship this guy. Don't worship a person. It's not, it's not doing anything. Truly, there is only one person, one experience. Like, we are all the same person. So, like, anytime we focus on something other than ourselves and our own, our own understanding, when we understand ourselves, then we understand everything. It is a journey of self. And the others are there to help. And we're here to help the others on their journey of self. And I think like Jesus lost touch with that concept that other people were having the same experience he was having. And he made it all about himself. So when he said it, people were like, a lot of people were like, the dude's nuts. Don't go near him. And a lot of people were like, oh my God, listen to how sure of himself he is. I want to be around him. And then it got dangerous because a bunch of people around him and he was just too extreme. It was too extreme. Christianity was started from an extreme explosion of something that happened in the history of humanity. And 2,000 years later, I think, people are waking up and realizing that it was just another guy doing another cult. Cult of personality. Yes, Christianity is a cult, of course. All religion is cult. I mean, if it's a, if Buddhism maybe isn't, but even Buddhism, it, there's the Buddha. Like everybody, all these religions and things like worship one guy. Even the United States government is like, kind of, not. It's not a cult because it, we're not worshiping George Bush. But like, why is it one guy that everyone like s- s- crowds around and and listens to and like we're just waiting for that next guy and it's going to be a random guy, someone that didn't even exist five years ago, in my mind is now the person that's that guy that everyone looks at, that everyone's obsessed with. George Bush right now. The president. The leader. Dude, like the council is where it's at. Council of 12. That's how decisions can be made properly. Like, now, the the Senate is saying they're going to cut funding for the war, and Bush 
is like like whining like a baby. I don't mean to say whining like a baby. He's whining. Let's see what he says. Oh, he's calling them irresponsible because they want to pull the funds. And he said, oh, okay, so if the funds get pulled, then that other troops are just going to have to go back to Iraq early. Or, well, that means that he said some ridiculous shit. Like blackmail. Like if we pull funds, oh, Americans are going to have to die. All these Democrats, they want to they want to make me send more troops back. That's what he's saying, that these Democrats pulling funds is going to make him do more things. He's doing it. He's the one that's obsessed with sending more troops, staying in Iraq. He's got this concept. He said he's going to veto anything that they put through that cuts funds. That, that Anything that goes against this rigid construct that he has in his mind about the way things are supposed to be, he's going to veto it, he says. That is fucked up. For a president to do that to a country, to the Congress, to the Senate. Don't veto anything they put through, dude. Listen to these people. Come on. You're running a country, people are people's lives. It's not like it's not like it's your house and it's your family and you're saying the way it goes in the house, but even then it's fucked up. But it's not like that. It's a huge deal that you're keeping all these people over there and that you're, you're, you're refusing your, to listen to the people around you who are telling you to scale it back and, and re, just relax and think about this. Think things through. War only breeds more war. There's nothing to be won. No war can be won. And especially this where there's no... Ter- we're, not, we're, not, we're not strategically taking territory. And if we are, then you better be honest about it. But I don't see that happening. I don't see us taking resources and taking land for America. It's not conquest, so there's nothing to win. This is terrorism on both sides. And it's got to stop. 